Hello again, my creative cougars, or should I say top of the morning. As you know, St. Patrick's Day is right around the corner. So if you're ready to do a drawing that's got a little bit of a St. Patrick's Day theme, and if you're feeling the luck of the Irish, well, we'll get started. Well, if we're celebrating St. Patrick's Day, nothing could be more fitting than a leprechaun with a pot of gold. So that's what we're going to draw today. And we're going to start out with a pot of gold. And like we always do, we're going to draw lightly and we're going to make a big circle for the pot of gold. So right in the middle of your paper, put a little mark to show the top of the pot of gold. So just put a mark right in the middle of the paper. It's not close to the top. It's halfway down. I make a little mark. It doesn't have to be dark. And then I'm going to go almost all the way to the bottom, maybe an inch or two from the bottom. And I'm going to make another mark. And when I do that, I'm going to know where the top of my circle is and where the bottom of my circle is. Now, it may not be a perfect circle, but it should be just about the right size because I know where the top is and I know where the bottom is. So if you haven't done it yet, put a little mark at the top of your paper and a little mark, pardon me, not at the top, put a little mark at the middle of your paper, right in the center, and put a little mark right near the bottom, only an inch or two from the bottom. And when you do that, lightly draw your circle that goes from the top to the bottom. And there's my circle that shows my pot of gold. After I have my circle, I'm going to pick a line somewhere near the top. And it's almost a straight line, but it's got a little bit of a curve and it goes all the way across the top of my circle. And you can see how it's almost straight, but it's got a little bit of a curve to it. Now, if yours is completely straight, that's okay. I'm going to make mine with a little bit of a curve to it. After I've done that, I'm going to draw a little curve right here. Now, it's mostly below the line that I made, so it's right down here. It's a little curve like this. But it also goes a little bit, just a little bit above that line that I made. And then I'm going to extend it a little bit over here. And this is the rim, the edge that goes along the top of my pot of gold. And I can erase this line. And I can erase this line. And now my pot of gold is nearly finished. At least, at least the pot is, and I can put the gold right up here. Now the next thing I'm going to draw is the leprechaun's face. And it's also going to be a circle, but it's going to be much smaller. So right in the middle, between the gold and the top of the paper, I'm going to draw another circle that's about the size of my fist. Now don't trace around your fist because then it's going to look all lumpy. So just look at how big your fist is and then try to imagine on your paper how big a circle would be if it's the same size as your fist. So I'm going to look at mine. And there's my circle. And I'm going to draw it lightly. And I'm not going to draw with one single dark line. I keep going around until I decide that it's just the right size and shape. So go ahead and draw a circle that's maybe, like I said, about the size of your fist, maybe a little bit smaller. You want to make it so that this space and the circle and this space are about the same. So don't make it teeny tiny. Give them a nice big head so you have room to draw a cute face on it.
Now, after I've done that, I'm going to come from my circle down to my pot of gold, but I'm going to make it a little bit smaller where it touches the circle and a little bit bigger when it comes down. So go ahead and draw two lines and you can see how his body gets a little bit bigger as it comes down and it gets smaller when it gets closer to his head. Go ahead and draw these two lines. Now after I've done that, it's time to give him some arms. So I'm going to come from the very, very top of the body, right where the body touches the head, and I'm going to have a line that goes up. Kind of like a little stick arm, but we're going to make it look not so skinny by drawing another line a little bit lower and then connecting them. And don't be afraid to make them go pretty close to the end of the paper, but not so close that we don't have room for the hands. Now he's got his head, he's got his body, and he's got his arms. And I'm going to draw an oval right at the end of his arms. to show his hands, but so that it doesn't look like it's a paw, we're gonna to have to give him thumbs. So there's a thumb, and there's another thumb, and then I'm gonna erase this line right here to show that his hand is connected to his thumb, and his thumb is connected to his hand. And we can see how we're starting to look more and more like a leprechaun, more and more like a person, because now we've got arms and hands. And I'm going to draw another line that, again, is almost a straight line, and it's near the top. It's not in the middle, and it's not way up at the top, but it's closer to the top than the bottom. So if this is the middle, I'm going to go up about halfway and draw a line. Now, if you want to make yours a straight line, that's okay. Mine has got a little bit of a curve to it. Just like this had a little bit of a curve to it, but instead of curving down, now it curves up a little bit. And I'm going to draw another line that goes exactly in the same direction. And it's just as long. Now, do you know what I'm drawing right now? It's the brim of his hat. So it goes a little bit past his head. Then I'm going to draw a line here and here and erase the line of my circle. And now it looks like the brim is in front of the circle. I've had some students asking about drawing a girl leprechaun and a boy leprechaun. I've also had some students asking about how to draw two different kinds of hats. So I'm going to show you two different kinds of hats to start us off. Now the boy can have a round hat or the girl can have a square hat or it can go the other way around. So we're going to start off with a hat and whichever kind of hat that you like, that's what you should draw for your leprechaun. And then afterwards, we're going to work on the face and I'm going to show you how the boy's face and the girl's face are going to be a little bit different.
I'm also going to show you the difference between drawing a boy leprechaun and a girl leprechaun. For example, the girl leprechaun is going to have longer hair and eyelashes, and the boy is going to have a beard. If you're drawing a girl leprechaun, you probably don't want to give her a beard. Also, if you're drawing a boy leprechaun, you don't have to give him a beard if you don't want to. So when I show you that step, you can, you can draw the beard or not draw the beard. It's completely up to you. So if you're ready, we'll get started on the face. Well, we're almost ready to give him a face. So I'm going to start not in the middle because as we have talked about before, people have the tendency to make the face too high. So if this is the middle of my circle, I'm going to come down a little bit lower. And I'm going to draw lightly just a little oval. Just a little oval. I'm going to make it a little bit darker than I should just so that you can see it. But you can decide for yourself whether he's going to have a little nose or a big nose because remember there's nothing at all wrong with big noses. Moving on. I'm going to give him a nice big smile which is just going to be a curved line. Now if you want to make your smile different you can. Mine is just a curved line with two tiny little lines at the end of it to make it look like his chubby little cheeks are being pushed back because his smile is so big. And then this time, I'm going to draw just two little curved lines for his eyes because he's smiling so much, his eyes are squinting a little bit. If you want to have both eyes open, or if you want to have one eye open and one eye closed, so it looks like he's winking at you, that would be fine. I'm going to draw two little curved lines to make it look like he's smiling so big. that his eyes are squinting. Now above that, I'm going to make two more shapes that look kind of like bananas. They look like bananas with the ends pointing down, and those are his eyebrows. Okay, I'm going to give him maybe just a little line right here to show some of his hair. A line there and there to show a little hair along the side of his head. There's just a little letter C on the side of his head and a backwards letter C to show his ears. And then finally, I'm going to draw another curve just like the bottom of my circle, except it's going to be a little bit lower. So if this is the bottom of my circle, I'm going to come down maybe a little bit lower and then go right up to the middle of his ear. I'll do the same thing over here. And when I color it orange, it's going to look like his beard. I'm going to erase the lines that are behind it because I don't need them anymore. His beard is covering up that part of his shirt. And all I have to do now is add some details. And the details 
are really the things that you guys do very well. So you should be comfortable with this. You can add different kinds of details that, that uh, any kind of details that you want. I'm going to show you some of the details that I want to put on. Like maybe I want to make cuffs on the end of his shirt. You don't have to do that. I'm going to put a little, maybe a little V for his shirt, a little circle for his button. I'm going to put some ovals in the pot of gold. And sometimes they angle up. Sometimes they go straight across. Sometimes they angle the other way. But any way that you do it is fine. Any kind of circles or ovals that you draw will make it look like his pot of gold is full of coins. If you color this yellow, it's going to look like it's full of gold. So your ovals or circles or coins or however you draw them don't have to be absolutely perfect. And I'm almost finished. I'm going to put maybe a little bit of detail on the pot itself. Right at the very bottom, I'm going to draw a rectangle. Half of it is on the pot and half of it is below the pot. And again, this line, do I need it? I don't need it. So it's a good thing that I drew lightly. And my pot is going to have three legs, so I'm going to draw two more. And this time they're kind of like triangles. They're not real pointy on the bottom, but you can see how they get bigger as they get closer to the pot itself. There's one of those triangles. There's another. And I think now that my leprechaun and I are ready for some color. Well, I finished coloring, I guess. I mean, it's got all the colors that I want where I want them to be, but it's not really an example of my best coloring. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to color a little bit neater with a little bit more oomph and see if that improves my picture. Well, now I recolored it. I took my time and I went over those scribbly white spaces that were there and I colored with a little bit more oomph and I think it looks much better now. But there's one more thing that I'm going to do that I think is going to improve the picture even more. I'm just going to take a black color pencil and I'm going to go over my lines to give those details that sometimes get lost when you add color a little bit more definition and a little bit more pop. So let's see how it goes. <coughs> Well, now I finally finished my picture. I took a green color pencil. I went over the, uh, the shirt because I thought the white shirt with the white background just didn't stand out enough. And then I took a black color pencil and went over all my original pencil lines. And I think it gives a little more detail, a little bit more pop, and I think it looks much better. Well, however you finish off your leprechaun picture, I hope you enjoyed this project. I look forward to seeing your drawings. And until we get together again, may your troubles be less, your blessings be more, and nothing but happiness walk through your door.